So I don't know if you guys have seen this study. There's uh, a couple of published case reports with a carnivore diet and type 1 diabetes. So this one is really cool. The case study is titled Type 1 Diabetes Successfully Managed with the Paleolithic Ketogenic Diet, which is mm -hmm. essentially synonymous with a nose-to-tail carnivore diet. What's so cool is this is a 19-year-old male, newly diagnosed type 1 diabetes, put on insulin regimen, um, 20 days later shifted toward a nose-to-tail carnivore diet, and he completely discontinued insulin. Uh, strict adherence to the diet resulted in normal glucose levels and a more than three-fold elevation in C-peptide level, uh, which was so interesting because it indicated uh, a recurrence or of this restored insulin production. And perhaps at this point, I should just pause and make sure that all the listeners understand what we're talking about with type 1 versus type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, we're going to get into a little bit later in the podcast. It's sort of adipocyte insulin resistance. It's an insulin resistant phenomenon where the pancreas has to produce more and more insulin because tissues of the body, mainly the adipocytes, become resistant to that insulin. But type 1 diabetes, like Robbie and Cyrus have, is usually, it's basically thought to be due to an autoimmune attack on the pancreas with destruction of the pancreatic beta cells and decreased production of insulin. And so in this case, what's so interesting is this 19-year-old man with autoimmune illness and attack on his pancreas leading to decreased insulin production, presumably because of destruction of the beta cells. And then C-peptide is a, is a fragment of insulin that we can measure in the blood that's more stable minute to minute. So when we actually want to see insulin levels in the blood or insulin surrogate levels, we measure C-peptide. For him to have a restored threefold elevation of C-peptide suggests that he had a, a cessation of the autoimmune attack on his pancreas. So it's a pretty interesting case, wouldn't you guys say? So yeah. I actually have come across that paper. Cyrus, have you read that paper? I have not read that particular paper. So no. I came across that paper. Can you remind me um, how long he had type 1 diabetes? It was newly diagnosed. Okay, so, so that's, that's the nuance I want to bring back yeah, to yeah. the Kurt Tyson conversation. Because I've read that paper, you know, being a person who's all about trying to heal type 1, this stuff comes across my path. Um, and th it's a very interesting point here. Um, and I would love to see more research of what happens to people when they are recently diagnosed. They're in that, that honeymoon phase, the beginning process. We don't truly know what's going on with the cause of type 1. Autoimmune, like, yeah, there's a lot of science around that, but we don't truly, truly know what is the actual cause of type 1 diabetes, what is actually going on. So, Kurt Tyson's an example. There's a couple, there's like a two young boys, they have an example, it's like Health East Solutions, um, that's a paper. There's a couple other anecdotal examples of people making lifestyle change right after diagnosis yes. and being able to see a turnaround. So, I, again, I think it's interesting. Um, and I, I think we need more research and see hey, what would happen if somebody like that, what if they adopted a, a low-fat plant-based whole food diet? <coughs> Question for you. Uh, can, you, do you. can you dig up the numbers? What numerical value was to C-peptide before and after the intervention? Do you know? So normal diet, the C-peptide was, I'll find it for you. It's in here. There was a threefold. I'd have to actually pull it up if they put it on the paper here. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that if he has type 1 diabetes, that his C-peptide value probably started out at like a 0 0.1 or 0 point. So it says, to ascertain type 1 diabetes, laboratory examination of C-peptide carried out. C-peptide level of 0.6 nanogram per ml measured January 8th, 2014. And then um, uh, I'd have to see what the second measure was, but they say... Um, the C-peptide measurement was repeated on the 10th week of the diet. Uh, this indicated an elevation to a value of 2.2 nanograms per ml. Yeah, and that's, a, that's you, a big change. Yeah, and as you know, um, a ketogenic carnivore diet or a carnivore diet is going to have a low C-peptide. My C-peptide is 0.9 or 0.8 when I measure it because my fasting insulin is 1.9 or 2.3. So it's, there is basically, it's, it's interesting, you know, because what we see on these very low carbohydrate carnivore or ketogenic diets, there's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of fasting insulin present in the first place. So mm -hmm. C-peptide is quite low, but I think you're absolutely right, Robbie. What we've got here, I think the way that I would formulate this in my mind is that I think type one diabetes is probably autoimmune. And if we can remove the things that are causing the autoimmune injury, mm -hmm. which may be processed carbohydrates, vegetable oils, et cetera, we can, if we can stop that autoimmune injury, we can, we can reverse the process. But it is interesting to me, and I think we'll probably get into this later, that a fully animal-based diet that's high in fat, 
especially high in saturated fat, was able to reverse type 1 diabetes. That'll provide some fodder for future. No, I mean, it's fascinating. <laughs> it, um, and I, I would think what's going to be fun to see is I hope they do a follow up on him. They I mean, did after six and a half months. So they said, uh, uh, currently the patient on the PLA lithic ketogenic diet, which is a carnivore diet for six and a half months, he's free of complaints, no side effects emerged on that one.